So welcome back to the lineup. I'm Mike Gold. This is LJ Mazzilli. We're with our special guest, Jack the Joke Man. Hi, fellas. How Don't be doing? nervous. Oh, we Don't be nervous. nervous. <laughs> we were. We were. I'm nervous. So it's very exciting to meet your father. And I will have to tell my Yogi Berra story before we do anything. Okay. Uh, I go way, way back. Um, I undiscovered baseball in 1962 when I discovered girls. And people say, why, why weren't you a Met fan? Because there were no Mets when I was a kid. It was all Yankees. And the girls and the Mets hit at the same time. And the girls won. But uh, I was always a big fan, Yankee fan, my whole family, forever. And there's a great story about uh, 1956, the Yankees are playing the Dodgers in the World Series. And Don Larson is on his way to his perfect game. And it's the third inning. And Don called Yogi Berra out to the mound. And Yogi came out and said, what's going on, Don? He said, Yogi, you gotta do me a favor. You gotta button up your fly, I'm getting mixed signals. Oh, that's, great. <laughs> that's phenomenal. I love that. That's great. That is absolutely phenomenal. So I thought I should tell that story. Why not? That's awesome. So it's nice to meet you guys. Yeah. I don't have a lot Very of baseball nice stories. We're, we're happy to have you on our podcast. We know that you have your own podcast. We are compadres. We compadres. have uh, I have stand up memories with uh, Professor Peter Bales. He's my partner. We've been comedians together for. 43 years, I hate, I hate saying that, but we're dear friends, we've been friends forever and ever, we live very close to each other on Long Island, and they wanted me to do a pod podcast for Tide and Media, and I said, you know, I, you know, sitting there and talking about yourself, let me have one of my friends come in, and Peter came in, we did 25 podcasts before we had a guest, because really? we couldn't get enough of just going through everything and everything. I mean, a lot happens in 40 years, you know. Mm -hmm. And now we've had lots of guests and having lots of fun, and the crew is, you know, the whole Titan Media gang. Amazing. They're all Amazing. very special, and we have fun. And I'm sure, have you guys done a lot of these yet, or are you just starting? Fifth one, right? Well, yeah, we've, we've filmed Practice. about five times. We probably kept about none of them. <laughs> we had one, yeah, one good line. Maybe this one, we'll, maybe we'll one, keep this one. Rule number yeah. one, they don't. They don't have to know what's going on behind the curtain. You, know, yeah, yeah, you did yeah. five perfect podcasts. Exactly. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. No, but that's great. But it's fun, right? You get all fun. jazzed up yeah, and definitely. it's exciting. You know. It's a lot to learn, but, but I think that's the fun part for us. So. The whole thing is you just have to learn to not do anything. Just sit and relax and talk and enjoy yourself. Yep. Sound like is, you know, that's the whole thing. When did, uh, when, did you, when did you first find out that you were funny? <laughs> you know, you still question, you know, it, being a comic is funny because I'm, I'm old. And to this day, if somebody says, what are you doing? I say, I'm a comedian. I'm always waiting for somebody to tap me on the shoulder and go, no, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> but uh, I was always a, a wise guy. And uh, I'm not a comedian as much as a joke teller. And, um, you know, you get, when I start getting famous on the Howard Stern show, you get interviewed over and over, and they ask the same questions, and people don't want to hear, I don't know. You know, so I had to go back in my memory. <clears throat> True story, I, I grew up in East Norwich, which was a little town on the North Shore of Long Island, and a little hamlet, little gang. So uh, we're having a snowball fight, okay? And there's like five of us or something like that, and we're freezing cold. So we came into my buddy's house and sat on the living room floor, to get warm, to get, get a little drier. You know, your lips are blue, you're freezing, you're dripping wet. And I'm in third grade, it's like 1955, and I'm in third grade, he's in second grade, he's in fourth grade. You know, it's like a small gang, small hamlet, and we're freezing, and you know, it, there was no dryers. It wasn't like you came in and took off your clothes and put them in the dryer to fluff them. There was no dryers in 1955. <laughs> In the little hamlet, you sat there and you froze your ass off until you got a little warmer and your lips were a little less blue. And we were <laughs> sitting there, and when I tell this story, I am in the room, I swear to God, and my cousin walked in who was in eighth grade. I'm in third grade, he's in eighth grade, and he took a piece of paper out of his pocket and he read a filthy poem. <laughs> and instantly, my friends were mesmerized. They were like transfixed. Next thing you knew, they were laughing, they weren't cold, they weren't wet, they, they were just enchanted, and something in my little stupid mind must have went click, that's, that's cool, I like that. And I just have remembered every joke I've known, I mean, I've heard 
my whole life. Clean jokes, dirty jokes, they have just stuck in my mind. And that's, that's what I do, that's and that's awesome. all I've done for all this time. You know, I, I went to college and graduated as a mechanical engineer in 1971 from Michigan State. <laughs> but I, I used my diploma to roll pot, okay? I, mean, I, never, <laughs> I never used it. And I played music and um, played guitar my whole life in high school and college, and then played music and wrote songs the whole 70s on Long Island. And then, uh, and then I quit. <laughs> to quote Rodney Dangerfield, to, to give you an idea how well I was doing in music, when I quit, I was the only one who knew I quit. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> and then funny. I started telling jokes, which I had accumulated my whole life, and, and I got lucky. You know, this whole thing, it's a little bit of luck, a little bit of talent, and fusion, and, you know, and I got you, lucky. Do you, uh, are you Irish a little bit? You know, my whole life, I always said no. Everybody assumes that I was Irish. I said, no, 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 I'm not Irish. And then my buddy got me that stupid 23 and me, <laughs> and you know, 25% Irish. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, uh, so I got an Dutch, Irish Dutch Huguenot and uh, <laughs> Dutch and, and, you know, Eastern European, you know, um, basically English and Dutch, you know. So I got an Irish joke for you. I am always <laughs> ready. I, know, right? I will, a, I will yeah. have to be polite because I know every joke. All right. But I'm going to pretend I haven't heard it. Okay, let's see. Why can't Irishmen be lawyers? I don't know. Wait, they, wait, do you know that? Do I, you know? I know. Wait, do, do you know that? I know why. Oh, I know oh do you know? Of course you know why you're telling oh, okay. the joke. Well, you tap me, so I don't know. <laughs> do you know the answer? You probably know it. What would you call an Irish guy under a wheelbarrow? A mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's your joke? All right. It's why can't be Irishmen be lawyers? Why? Because they can't pass the bar. <laughs> I like it. I like it. That's all I got. You didn't, you didn't get a That's laugh out of that. Yeah, yeah. The whole goal was he got a laugh out of you after he told the joke. You got a laugh. Just laugh right now. I didn't laugh the, when the I heard camera. that in 1950. <laughs> laugh. Laugh. <laughs> no, that is a great joke. That is a joke. All right, no, but let's get I back. will give you that. I will give you that. It's a great joke. Let's, uh, let's get back to the real stuff. Um, how did you get hooked up with the you Howard Stern show? You want to hear an show? Irish joke? Yeah, yeah. Here we are in a bar, and one in the bar is one guy, and the other in the bar is another guy, and they're both drinking, and the first guy says, so where are you from? The other guy says, I'm from Ireland. He says, but God, I'm from Ireland. What part of Ireland? He says, well, I'm from Dublin. He says, no kidding, Dublin, I'm from Dublin. What part of Dublin? Well, I'm from Green Street. You're from Green Street? So am I. What number Green? He says, I'm from 215 Green. 215 Green? Me too. Come on, let's get out of here and go have a beer. And they leave to go have a beer. And the owner walks in, he says to the bartender, any business tonight? He says, just those drunken O'Brien twins. <laughs> oh my God. That's good, I like that. I like that. That's awesome. That's great. So have you ever been booed off stage after? Not till now. <laughs> you gotta be one no, tough you know, that, you don't, you don't really get booed off stage, but in your mind, you know, you have a bad show. Luckily, I've never had a bad show. <laughs> No, it's a it's, uh, it's very odd feeling, you know, being in show business and being on stage, when you're doing bad, you know, it's such a crazy, I, people say, oh, it's so much fun, to, you know, you're signing autographs and selling your stuff, and oh, it's so fun, I sell people. It is the single greatest job in the world when it's going well. Of course. And when it's not, it's the single worst job in the world. I remember first starting out, Sounds and a lot I would call. freak out and get the cold going up your neck and the hairs on your neck go up. And maybe the best thing in my life that ever happened to me was somebody referred to flop sweat. That there's actually a term for when you're bombing out and you have that cold sweat and you're freaking out. And I'm like, so I'm not the, I thought that was God's way of telling me, don't do this, you shouldn't be right. on stage. You know? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, sometimes it goes better than others, you know. Not booed off stage. I, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody actually booed off stage. I've seen people leave stage and have people be really thrilled that they were getting off right, the stage. Right, right, right. <laughs> I guess I'd be the same, yeah. There was a, there was a couple that worked at a, uh, in New York City for years, and they were working at this place, the comic strip in Fort Lauderdale, and we were there for two weeks. Each comic worked for two weeks, and they had been there a week, and they were a two-man act, a man and his wife, and they were horrible. They were horrible. And at the end of the week, the manager called him in the office 
this is a famous story down there. He said, listen, uh, I think you should pack up and you should go home to New York. And the guy didn't get it. He's like, no, no, Joe, no, we've we only been here a week. We have another week. Yeah, I think you should pack up and you should, you, you should go home. No, no, we only did one week. We got another week left. He said, all right, you're not getting it. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you ever get a chance to work in the post office, take the job because you two, <laughs> When you two walk on stage, you're <laughs> trespassing. Oh my God. <laughs> I've, never, I've never heard it That's said great. worse than that. You were trespassing. Oh, man. Awesome. Now, so, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's sometimes better than others. That's all. When does uh, your podcast air? When does your show air? Um, our new shows come out on Wednesday. And I still don't know how the whole thing works, but it gets posted on three, four, five different cable stations or whatever it's called, internet places, and, and, but all the podcasts are available. We're just, we just got done recording our third season, and we're just nice. about done posting the, the end of the second season. And, and it's really fun, and they're funny, and people are enjoying them, and uh, you, it, I haven't gotten the least bit tired of them, you know, because the stories just come and come and go. What, we did something very interesting the last couple of weeks of the first couple of weeks of the new season, we had on a comic and his wife. And then we had a female comic and her husband. I like that. And that's real interesting, like you know, because yeah. you're getting it from a whole nother angle. It's really great. We had Joey Cola, who's hysterical. And, uh, and now I'll forget the other guy's name and I'll feel terrible. But Ooh, don't, ha cool. don't ever get old. Don't ever get old. So, so our very first episode, we actually plugged your show. I don't know if we're going to keep the episode. Like I said before, I don't think we're going to keep anything oh, well, besides now I tonight. Think we still got the coffee mug, though. But, but we had two uh, Jackie, the Joke Man, Marlings coffee mugs right on the front of our, wow, that's of a our stage. Now, why didn't you post it? Are you a little done? I, I mean, I'm not pointing fingers, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're not talking about the guy that didn't say a word the whole time your father was up. <laughs> He delivered well on my questions, though. He really did. Uh, he did. Yeah. I was going to say that. Yeah, he did. So now well, you got to plug us on your show. I, I, I promise you we will. And you should absolutely put your first show up there. Put all the shows up there. Hey, what's the they, they, so people could see you getting better if you don't think you were doing that well. I think we're great. Yeah, of course. First. Yeah. As long as, we got as, long as you do. do. You know, we got the worst to do, but we're fine. Well, whatever you do, don't ask your friends. You know. Yeah, yeah. Because they'll say, it was great, except for and then sit down and get comfortable because, you know. Yeah. But well, you guys are having fun, right? If you're having absolutely. fun, that, that's the whole thing. Yeah. I, I give Peter Bales a really hard time, and, and it works, you know. Yeah, we do We're turning into kind of like the Smothers Brothers, which is like a group that probably disappeared 50 years before you guys were born. So I'll stop making that reference. <laughs> but, then, you know, we tease each other, and I give him a hard time. And, you know, I'm a loud are. mouth, and he's quiet, you know, so. That's, we gel with that. Like now, what about you guys? What's your history? Are you guys brothers, friends, competitors? Uh, that's, uh, that's a great neighbors, question. Neighbors, college I'll, friends. So I'll let, I'll let, I'll let, I'll let Mike answer sister. this. Yeah. Well, no, I'll let Mike answer how we first met. How we first met in uh, UConn? Yeah. It wasn't so he was a date. My, <laughs> <laughs> he came to UConn. No, we went on a date years later. <laughs> yeah. He came to UConn. He was uh, the shortstop coming in. I was the shortstop. You don't mean Alaska. You mean University of Connecticut. The University of Connecticut, okay. yes. Okay. And uh, I remember I walk into the locker room. He's already set up in his locker. It's right next to mine. I mean, stuff was, stuff was in my locker. Stuff was on the ground. Stuff was underneath my chair. And I'm just like, who? And then he starts talking to his buddies. And he's speaking a different language. I'm like, what? Who recruited this? What are we doing with this guy? A foreign language or a, it was a baseball language? It was a made up. It was made, made up. up with his boys. Yeah. Which some are here. And so you might, they might know the language. But that's how we met. Just, he, to, just to leave you out? No, no. He was, I had to get to know him. I, just, I came in hot. I, junior, I came in hot. Which I respected. I loved that. I said, all right, this guy's coming for my job. Let's, let's, let's make it happen. But we ended up, uh, we played that whole year together. So who plays what? I played, I ended up playing third base that year. Yeah, and that, I, I, ended up, I ended up playing second base that year, yeah. yeah. And then from there, we actually didn't talk for, I mean, we talked obviously, but on and off. And then um, I ended up meeting him in double A, uh, Binghamton, New York, with his family. We're coming off like a 23 game straight. We got two double headers coming up. And LJ, I meet him in center field. He's like, hey, we want to 
take you to dinner. And my mom and dad are here, sisters. I was like, oh, perfect. And I remember sitting there, I'm so exhausted. I'm like, I just, I can't go out to dinner. I gotta think of something. And I came back and there was no saying no um, when it comes to, like Lee was like, hey, let's, let's cause, of course, I'm done, let's go, wherever you wanna go. And then that's where I met his sister from there, so I end up you, you ended up what? Did you marry his sister? <laughs> no, I, you missed the, the joke. <laughs> you ended up what? That, uh, that, uh, so I'll, I'll tell it for him because he's forgetting. Yeah, so he's forgetting right now. So did you wind up sleeping through dinner? Is that the story? No, I ended up going to yeah. dinner. Yeah. yeah. Dinner. That's, that's how we've been. That's how we're together And right so now. we went out after dinner. It was my birthday, me and my twin sister's birthday. Um, and we had a great time. The, the night ended. And at, at the end of the night, my twin sister asked me for Mike's, num oh, for Mike's number. And I thought, because I left a little earlier, so I thought they were trying to like all find each other. So okay. I, sent her, I sent her his number. We played each other the next day again, and then we'd go out to dinner again. <laughs> so I'm like, Mike, let's go out to dinner, whatever. And he's like, all right, well, he came again. So we're at dinner and my sister's giving him the eye. Like he's, she's right. just staring, staring, staring through, through, through his soul. And, and, and I'm like, this is not the flirtatious I'm eye. Wanted, no, no, no. This is the evil eye. The evil eye. She wanted to, she wanted to hurt him. So in my, in my mind, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, one, what happened last night? Two, what, what is, what is going on right now? So you what, felt the tension. Right yeah. A hundred percent. I could see it in her yeah. eyes. I didn't and, know that. Uh, Your father's at the table. Everyone's at the table, but I could feel the tension between the them. Time. And I'm like, what happened last night? So, so. We go out again after dinner, and Lacey goes up to Mike, and she's like, why, Did not why didn't you text me back last night? And Mike's like, what do you mean? I never got a text. She's like, I sent you all these texts. She pulls out her phone. I say all these texts. Where are, my, where are my responses? And Mike's like, I never got them. I gave her the wrong phone number. <laughs> So that so whole she's night, she's the already whole day, got you side. She's, she's, she's texting time. him like, saying, I can't wait to come to the game and see you tonight. And, and he's ghosting her. And right? she thought it just bounced off him. Yeah. yeah she said, I never just, talked to yeah. you again. I'm like, wow. Yeah. I didn't even know what was going on. That is an yeah. excellent way to keep guys away from your sister. Yeah, that's giving the false numbers, right? <laughs> and that's what I thought. And so then fast, for golf. fast forward a month, we were playing golf. I'm, I'm in, I'm in uh, Portland, Maine. Portland playing against him now. We go out to golf. I had no idea him and my sister were talking for like a month at that time. And he, we're on like the 17th or 18th hole. And meanwhile, me and him were having our best round. Oh, yeah. I was, so the, vi beat, the vibes were high. I beat you. And Mike goes, listen, actually, Mike didn't say anything. I saw my sister calling him on his phone. I said, Strategic. Lacey's calling you? Like, what's going on? He's like, oh, man, I've been meaning to tell you. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if I said it like I that. I was like, uh, you know, you were like, uh, you know, I, you know, if it's not okay with you, then I won't do I anything. But, you know, I, I really want to date your sister. What did I say to you? Good luck. It was like right to my face. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, good luck. And she's a handful. And then and now we're here. And then I three punted. So that's, that's so, our story. Uh, so this is a year ago, five years ago, five ten years, years ago. Five years ago, a little over five, ago. yeah. Yep. So that's and where is she now? She's still running? She's, she's, <laughs> she's sick at home. She's sick at home. Yeah, she's sick. Mike's not taking good care of her. I mean, this is what she told me. <laughs> That's just what she told me. Yeah, it's... So yeah. you did marry her? No, no, we lived together. Oh, I'm so we glad you up. brought that up. Can you ask him when he's going to marry that, her? So he's getting to the joke. <laughs> when's, uh, when's the question? Dinner is served. Like, right now. <laughs> I don't know how oh, do I stepped on it. When, when <laughs> none of this is my fault. No. So you wound up dating her. Let's just say that yes, way. And dating. you wind up moving in together. Yes. And you haven't married her yet. Yeah. Which is laying an egg with everybody in this room. <laughs> they're, they're all right here too. They're all right here. But 20, no pressure. No yeah, pressure. Zero. 23 is a great year. Zero pressure. That's my favorite number, 23. <laughs> now Mike's been, a, Mike's been an amazing addition to our family. He actually filled in for uh, Santa Claus duties a couple years ago. The most. Scary I was ever. asked to. Was I was asked scary. to do it, but I immediately said no, and then. <laughs> And then Mike was like ready to jump on it, and he what did it for two years right no away. No offense to anybody, but he's a little closer. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, a hundred percent. The weight that gained. <laughs> I only gained seven pounds. Seven. Santa Claus. Seven twenty. Santa Claus is not from Sicily. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, gosh. So, <laughs> anyway, so it was, it was amazing having you. Um, I look forward to collaborating at some point. Absolutely, and, we will. We and following will. your podcast. We will uh, plug you and you plug us and we can share guests and, uh, and we have a new show to announce. We're going to be doing a father-daughter cooking show. 
I mean, it's Iron Media, and we have yet to announce it, but uh, I think I want to produce it or maybe get Michael Zinn, our fabled person, and Caroline, and uh, it's going to be very special, and they will feed us, and maybe we'll do a couple podcasts where we're all together. You got to mix it up. You got to make it a little crazy, make it a little bit loose, and um, like that. Absolutely. Well, thank you for coming. Thank on. you very thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very thank much. you. So, uh, thanks for tuning in uh, to the lineup with LG Mazzilli and Michael um, and J Jackie the Joke Man Mar Marling. I will be invited to the wedding. Absolutely. No, no. I'm going to send you a picture of me <laughs> drinking out of your coffee cup tomorrow. That's how it starts. That'll probably happen before the wedding. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>